Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Robert Senadella. His new film, Art Bastard, uh, is going, a film about him, uh, is going to be out in uh, Toronto in the very near future, this weekend actually, the 14th through the 20th, directed by Victor Konevsky. I think you're going to not only enjoy this conversation, but you're going to love the film, so I really encourage you to get out and see it and look for it on Netflix coming up soon, Art Bastard. But Robert is an interesting guy. He's a fun guy. He's, uh, you know, humor uh, is very much a part of the work that he does and the art and the writing and so on and what he's been involved in for so many years. And he's a political guy. He's he's a guy who pays attention, it seems to me, who, who listens to uh, pretty much everything that's going on around him. And I think you're going to, uh, get, you're going to get a lot of of this. He, he, he's somebody who, as he would say, doesn't play the art game at all. And he talks about the establishment being very narrow-minded and, 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 and asks one of my favorite questions that I've heard in a long time, what isn't art? And so I think um, this is an interview uh, full of lots of fun, lots of insights. You've got to listen to it just to find out and watch the film just to find out what happens with him and his mentor and a trip uh, to Europe uh, from New York and t- over 20 glasses of wine. You'll, you'll, you'll get the story. You'll get the picture as you dig in a little deeper. Uh, Art Bastard is the film. Robert Senadella coming right up. And davidpecklive.com for more interviews, rabble.ca. Find out more about my public speaking and my writing. And I am coming right at you, Robert Senadella and Art Bastard. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We are joined by another very uh, special guest today. We have an artist here with us today. Robert Senadella is here to talk about, I think, just about everything, actually. <laughs> and uh, and his uh, new film that he appears in called Art Bastard. Robert, thanks so much for taking the time to, to be with us today. Well, I'm really uh, happy to... Uh, share whatever I can with you. Well, I'll tell you, for having having seen the film recently, I think I think you've you've shared already quite a bit uh, in your life, and 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 by the sounds of it, have plenty more to come. Um, t- tell tell me a little bit about about what it's like to be an art bastard. Well, you know, uh, in in my life, the um, I grew up as a uh, what I always say a legitimate bastard. I found. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm always I, legitimacy is a um, big concern in my life because when I found out that I was uh, not who I thought I was, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, it's always a bit of a shock. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, is that my art career, which I thought I thought my art career would would um, kind of be different, you know, but I'm I seem to be a bastard in my real life and also in the art world mm. Mm. Uh, because I don't play the the art game in, in the sense that um, I paint what I want to paint and I paint how I paint and et cetera, et cetera. And I don't, I, I just don't paint for the uh, marketplace. So I, so the, so the word, so the, it you know, has, has a double meaning art bastard. Sure. Um, so I think it, it turned out to be a pretty good title. Well, I love the way near the end of the film. I mean, it's certainly a message throughout, without a doubt. But you talk about, and I think it's a direct quote from you. You you know, you say that the the the, the establishment is narrow minded. Well, I, oh, totally. I mean, it's uh, it's it's a real problem. I think I think it, it's a problem uh, with with a lot of things, not just in the art world. Sure. Um, but you know the you know our news media. Yep. Uh, I think in I think in Canada you have a little bit more um uh honesty going on there but uh we are we are uh pretty much um it's it, everything is like a reality show just like you know what's going on with our so-called election, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty 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 much touches sort of all facets of life in a, in a sense. But in the film, but in the film, you are particularly referring to the art film. I mean, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe we could start with. Uh, and this is maybe an unfair question, but can you can you define it? 
you know, uh, art. You know, at one point, I think you the, there's a shot in the film where, you know, you're wandering through a gallery, and, and I think you say, the question really is, and I love it, uh, but you say the question really is, what isn't art? Right. Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, you know, I, I'm really glad you said that, because in the film, when I said isn't, it, it, it never, that's the one word that came out, almost it sounded like is, what is art? Right. But no, the question really is, what isn't art? And I think that's the um, that's that's the thing that you can you could go into any gallery now in in this day and age, and you would ask the uh, gallerist, you say, um, what isn't art? And they would look. You know, you would think it'd be easy to say, you know, mm-hmm. oh, well, I can give you a hundred things that are not art, right? But they won't answer that question. Mm. So I think that is the basis of you know, of the real problem with the art world right now. If you can't say what isn't art, well, uh, you know, you're really um, in a pretty bad uh, uh, place from my point of view. And, and, And would you ever, I mean, you sound like the kind of guy to me that, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but would sort of not skirt around definition, but would use the word definition with a small d in the sense that, you know, here's, here's the working model of what maybe art is, but we got to be pretty wide open to other ideas, other approaches, other opinions, other, other, other avenues. Right. Well, you know, um, the, the, the way I've dealt with that, because you have to really be kind of cagey. In yes. This, in this uh, <laughs> funny. So that's why my, my poster, the poster for the film, says it's not what they show that bothers yes. them. Yes. It's what they don't show. And, and that's really the truth. I don't care. Um, you know, I'm not going to go around and say, oh, wow, I don't like this or this. That, that's not the point. The point is, it's what they don't show. And, um, and from my point of view, I think the film pointed out uh, when I did all these Q&As at, at the end of uh, at least 50 different um, Q&As I did, every time the first question is, how come I haven't seen your art before? Wow. <laughs> and every once in a while, I'd say, I'd ask people, I'd say, uh, uh, does anyone uh, anyone uh, know about my art? And you know, every so one person, two people uh, raise their hands. But that's that's how. Um, uh, so I say, I'm most widely written about unknown artists in America. Right? <laughs> probably, and it's probably true. You're the, I've been you're, written about by you, just about. I mean, and but I'm not in a uh, U.S. museum. You're the art celebrity that nobody knows about. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> <laughs> clearly you're a celebrity for sure, but but in a in a in a really different way. So do you ever land like Robert? I mean, you know, the film clearly shows you as a teacher and a mentor and and so on. So you 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 do deal in technique without a doubt, um, and you talk about that with respect to abstract art. But do you ever sort of land on a technical definition of 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 what art is or or what good art is? Well, I, I, I look at, I, I think, a very general view. I think art is a form of communication. Mm. Okay. Nice. So, in other words, I, my intent as an artist is to communicate, um, which, and that, that distinguishes art from um, decoration, let's say. Right. Or, or design, right? And both are, you know, they're both viable things, but... Um, uh, what, what can I tell you? I'm, uh, I'm working on a painting now called Fin del Mundo, which means the end of the world. Hmm. It was something that was commissioned about a, a little over a year ago. And a guy who from California who commissioned me um, wanted to express, he knew my art, and he says he was so distressed by so much that that's going on, you know, fracking, uh, mm. Donald Trump, uh, this, that, and so I've, I've now, I'm just about uh, completing this painting, but uh, and it's roughly based on uh, on Bosch's um, uh, Garden of Earthly Delights in three sections and so on. But we find a um, there, there's a gallery that's going to uh, stick it in the window on 57th Street. Right on, right near Halloween, and run it until Election Day, and so uh, <laughs> this is a painting that that kind of chronicles the the uh, the craziness of mm-hmm. our um, of our election uh, process, and many other and many other things about 
America and and the world in general. But um, so I'm a, a a painter of history, and mm-hmm. I believe that painting has to do with uh, some form of communication. Would you say when you say communication, would you say storytelling? Well, no, not not just storytelling. I mean, that that's a no no in the art world. You, know, you say, oh, we, oh, you tell a story, you must be. Uh, Neanderthal. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, <laughs> you're a luddite with a brush. Yeah, yeah, uh, luddite or something. Uh, you know, but um, I'm I'm very happy to let people know that I always tell a story. There's there's once someone said uh, one critic said that there's uh, there's his, his paintings tell a story, but there's a story about every painting as well. Right, right. So um, you know, because uh, my paintings are um, they can be controversial, like um, the uh, crucified Santa Claus. Which, yeah, yeah. What's your uh, what's your beef with Santa anyway? By the way, <laughs> Robert. I mean, come on, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know he doesn't belong on a cross, but on the, <laughs> but on the other hand, you know, I wasn't the one who uh, who uh, replaced uh, Christ with Santa Claus as, as yeah. the. Uh, Image I, of uh, Christianity. I love speaking of images. I love the shot of of you know inside the storeroom window with Santa looking out at the the crowds looking at your piece uh, uh, on the on the street. Oh, was, would that have been back in the was that early eighties? That was uh, in uh, nineteen ninety eight. Oh, it was ninety eight. Ninety eight. Eighty eight was was the year that it was it was uh, taken out of the Saatchi and Saatchi show. Okay. Now, now Saatchi and Saatchi is known for their. Um, for 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 the sensations, right? They yeah. did the whole exhibition called Sensations. But when I had my show, you know, they they sponsored this big show of mine, and uh, when they saw the uh, Santa Claus painting, they, I mean, they they called me up and oh, we can't we can't show this. And I, you know, I'm thinking, what Sachi and Sachi? I thought you <laughs> were you were all about sensations, right? Sure. So it's it's not their idea of a sensation, you see. So, so it, so my work has been is uh, so that painting, by the way. So '88, it got it got uh, censored by Saatchi and Saatchi, and then ten years later, it got into the window at the Art Students League where I teach. Right. And that's how that. And then it went around the world. That 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 painting is probably if you look up Santa Claus on Google or something, usually this thing comes up first. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, that's hysterical. I'll make sure I tell my kids not to <laughs> yeah, not to yeah, Google yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. Well, I never... Yeah, right. I mean, I... That's I, awesome. I when, I when I painted it, my, my son was... Uh, I think he was nine. Yeah. And I remember he came in and he... he I, I used to put the painting against the wall so he wouldn't see it. So I, I know it's not a children's... <laughs> I know it's not a children's painting. And then when he looked and he peeked around, you know, and he comes in to me and he says, Dad, why did you do that? He said, why did you have to do that? He says, you know, so he's only nine years old, right? I, and I explained that I had to explain to him. When, I, when he came back later in the day, he said, you know, Dad, you're right. <laughs> and I, he's nine years old. That's awesome. So I had That's so a, great. I had such a um, rapport. I mean, it was like, wow, I, I really uh, got to. You know, he got to know me, and I got to know him in a special way. So clearly, an art critic at a very young age, but turns out to be a lawyer. Am I right about that? That, yep, a lawyer. And, and, uh, and as you joke in the film, the only guy with a real job in the family. Yeah, right. Joined the black sheep. <laughs> the family right. Because he has a job. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that. I have a lot of friends who are artists. Right? What's the line there? There is it. There, there. Waitresses waiting to become actors. Is that are waiters waiting to become actors? Is that the line? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's that's the. Uh... <laughs> or is it actors waiting to become waiters? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, yeah there's, it's kind of a double. Uh... It kind of kind of goes both ways. Yeah. So you say in the film. And, and I'm 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 fascinated by this. I'm intrigued, and and definitely want to hear more about it. But you remember no time in your life, quote, where I didn't want to be an artist. Close quote. What, can you can you talk about that a little bit? Is that I mean, is that right from chalk on the sidewalk to That's, to today? Well, it's, it's it's from the from uh, you know if if I can how far keep back you remember? Yeah, exactly. So maybe you're you're three or four or something. And I remember it at, um, at... Hey, hey, Robert, I can remember long enough back to know that Santa Claus does not um, um, deserve to be on a cross. That's how far I can go back. <laughs> 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 well, Christmas was always my... 
uh, you know, like every like every kid, it was a favorite time yeah. of, of year. But then, of course, as years went on, you'd, it would be Thanksgiving, and you'd have you'd see Santa Claus over there. Now it's at uh, now it's Halloween, and you've got Santa Claus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, the commercial aspect of it, I guess, really. Um, uh, somehow. Well, you, you you clearly redefine juxtaposition for the time, I would think. Yeah. In in a, yeah. in, a in a certain way, I mean, if if like you say that 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 gallery, uh, the show, uh, who was all about sensation, actually censored you, that's it's pr- it's quite telling. Yeah. Yeah. It is. So yeah, so tell me about that. N- always remembering that you so, want. Yeah. yeah. So as a kid, I I mean, my uh, I always found. Uh, in art, uh, like whether it's in a book, I'd, I'd see pictures, you know, even a young kid, I'd see, oh, a picture of a nude woman or something. I'd say, wow, that's like, you know, that's that's real life, you know, that, that's things that you wouldn't. Uh, so art was always um, of an interest because it seemed to be, it seemed to deal with the truth, somehow mm. something truth mm. about life. Hmm. And... Um, uh, I think in the movie you'll see that I looked at that um, um, Rockwell Kent, uh, his his um, Moby Dick. Yes. Where he had uh, these you know hundreds of illustrations of uh, these woodcuts that, that he did, but there was never never time. And that was like I was about four or five years old when I was uh, going going through that book that was uh, my family's uh, collection, and um, every. Um, the only thing that ever made sense to me really was um, was art. The o- the only thing that ever really made sense to you was art. Yeah, it. Uh, I had well, I had you know being a uh, <laughs> being illegitimate and knowing it at an early age. You know, I found out when I was six, and then then they and I I it was kind of something that I held. I I blocked it out. But right. It was always it was always known. And then when my mother finally tells me, you know, I said, "Oh, I even know, I even know who who it was, who my real father was." So, uh, so let, let's say I had a um, a childhood that um, you would say was uh, not the happiest. Mm. But so I found I found my I think kids have a way of uh, of um, you know finding the things that that work for themselves. You know, they you, you don't feel sorry for yourself as a kid what you do is you is you look for the positive right and art was always the positive uh, for me hmm. you say you say you too you talk about the, i mean there's there's so many threads in the film and so many different ways we could go here and just even on what you said there alone i hope we can come back to a couple ideas but you you talked at a point in the film about deciding uh, no longer to be a tragic figure um, right. You know, you, it's like you've made some sort of conscious choice, you know, and, and uh, as, a, as a person, but as an artist, maybe as a, as a father yourself and so on. Um, is that about the conscious choice that to, to get out of that sort of melancholic world because of that childhood yeah, past I, that you were dealing with, you know? Yeah, I, I think that you can, um, I think that choice was, it, it, it turned, uh, my life around in the sense that um, by the time I had made that choice, I realized being an artist was not <laughs> was not really going to be an easy right. an easy path. That's right. And and for someone, uh, my mother always said to me, "Oh, oh, art will save you." Right? That that I mean, just one of those things that she said. Oh, you have talent, and art was going to save you. Well, mm. I I came into the art world at a time when abstract expressionism was. Uh, now the that 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 was it. So that they had eliminated the uh, you know the storytelling, the I- images. You know, I, you know. I, I think I say in the film, you know, you um, I, I'm lo- I'm looking at the Jackson Pollock, right? And you say, well, you I've, you've heard of a bad Rembrandt, you've heard right. of a bad uh, Hopper, you've heard of a bad this and that, but you never hear about a bad. Pollock, right? right? So they're either right. all good or they're all bad. You know, so it's uh, which is a so, great line, yeah. <laughs> so they, so, so I feel feel that the rug was pulled out from underneath me as uh, someone that I, I, you know, uh, was a representational painter, and. Um, well, doesn't so, doesn't somebody even refer to you in the film as a traditional, like trained as a traditional painter? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
and 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 I have no. I mean, I and and in today's world, you would actually be um, scorned. You know, say they have they actually have. I I can't even be uh, an outsider artist. I can't because they have a they have actually have a um, a gallery and a uh, show that they have every year for outside outsider artists. But if you're an outsider artist, that means you can't. You know, you know, you can't know how to draw, or you can't mm-hmm. know. You see, so so I think I'm an outsider artist because I don't get into the mainstream uh, museums and so on. But they have these labels now for everyone, so uh, so I can't even be that. Uh, they have a thing called uh, de-skilled art. De-skilled art. That means if you have a skill of any sort. Um, then you can't be a D, you know, you know. <laughs> that sounds like I the mean, kind of art I should be doing. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, right. But as soon, but if you learn something, then you're out. You know, you you have to go. Oh, I see. Maybe okay. you could be an outside artist, but you can't be de skilled unless you absolutely have no skill. Well, isn't there something kind of contradictory in a way, uh, Robert, about? And maybe this is you railing, and this is kind of, in a way, what you've been railing against, you know, in, in your work and in your life and so on. But something kind of contradictory about trying to put you into some sort of, um, or anyone for that matter, into some sort of category. You know, let's label it. Let's name it. Oh, it's de-skilled art. It's this. It's abstract yeah. expressionism. It's it's good. It's bad. It's 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 polarizing. It's it's right. It's wrong. Right. No, Ab, you're totally... I mean, all the isms, all the different yeah. isms that they've had over the years and so on and so on. And um, and again, I go back to my poster that says, it's not what they show that bothers me. Yeah. It's what they don't show. Form, form, form of censorship. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that and that and that's such a commentary pretty much about all of us really too I mean just on a relational level on a on a mass media level right I mean uh the, what is it the uh, New York Times all the news that's fit to print really should read all the news that we think is fit to print Yeah well, yeah that yeah ab- absolutely I mean, the the uh, well then 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 you have uh, Fox News that says um uh, fair and balanced right. you have right. to <laughs> right. which right. makes you laugh I mean but you see, when you have to advertise something, yes, you know that it's probably just the opposite. Yeah, you know? so when you say, "Oh, fair and balanced," well, you know, well, of course, it's exactly the opposite with Fox. I remember reading years ago, reading um, uh, the Media Monopoly, I believe, by Bagdikian. I don't know if you know that book or not, but years ago, in a course in undergraduate level, and and we were watching some, you know, t- some 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 newscaster, and the opening line was, "Give us twenty minutes, and we'll give you the world." And oh, I, and yes, I, oh yes, oh yes, you yes. know, did that kind of line, right? Well, that that's what uh, one of the stations in New York. That uh, you hear it a thousand times. Um, uh, I forget which it is, but it's a news station, and that they they must have stolen that that line. It's like <laughs> twenty minutes, right? Give us twenty minutes, and how 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 ludicrous, right? Um, so I'm wondering, uh, can you tell me? <laughs> the re- so you sold a lot of Ludwig buttons, which I think is hilarious, and we don't have to talk about any more than that. And hopefully, just plant that as a seed for listeners to say, "What? What are they talking about? Got to see this film." <laughs> but fascinating little piece of business there. Tell me about the hostility dartboard. So you've, I love that, by the way, uh, and the letter that you received from Richard Nixon's executive assistant, and all. The, I mean, it's just fascinating. You've really kind of. Um, and I want to know if you've got a Trump dartboard right now and others, but uh, uh, you, you've you've sort of brought a couple of worlds together. You yeah, know, well, the I, commercial side, the the artful side, that soulful side, that thoughtful side, and yet you've also seemingly, you know, um, made some money doing this too, which is which is amazing. Yeah, well, I've always I've always believed in um, capitalism, even though I I kind of use it against itself, and I was like, <laughs> right. I, I tell you, and so capitalism doesn't really love me um, now as much as it used to. I used to be able to, half of the things I used to sell, like the uh, dartboards, uh, which started with uh, Lyndon Johnson when he was, uh, you know, in the Vietnam War. And I had uh, Ronald Reagan, and I had, uh, you know, just had all, all the um, political people, right? Now, those dartboards, Sold in Macy's and Gimbals, and you know, and, <laughs> and okay. Today, if I tried to, um, I made. A, I, I think in the, I don't know if in the movie they show the um, the white trash can. Uh, it says it has a picture of um, 
bush on it. And it's, it's, in the, it's, it's in the background of it's one the of the shots okay. when you're chatting. Yeah, and that was the, that was the, uh, the 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 prototype that I made. But I actually had them made. Uh, I hate to tell you, in China. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we and uh, I had an order from um, from NYU for uh, I think it was uh, three thousand. Wow. And then and then it was canceled because they showed it to someone in the school. But this was perfect for what for college kids, et cetera, et cetera. Oh yeah. So so items that I used to sell all the time uh, in the seventies and the eighties without any problem. I mean, that that was capitalism. But you see, we don't we don't really have it anymore. We have censorship even with with products. And as and, and and that's part of the problem with, with my art is that the uh, they look at the if I was an abstract painter right yeah there would be no you know, you'd look at it and you'd say oh well gee this uh, I like the red or I like this or gee I wonder what you know but when when you have a picture of uh, Santa Claus on a cross they don't look at how you painted it or or what makes it effective right they just look at the that there's a subject. So I'm constantly, um, you know, I'm behind the eight ball because I paint subject. <laughs> and it seems like that is ludicrous in itself, right? Right, right. That, um, but, but the same thing happened with, the, in, in the, uh, with my businesses. And I, I sold thousands and thousands of posters over the years. And uh, uh, another little interesting thing is that when Richard Nixon uh, had the um, students shot at Kent State. Yes, that was probably that was the end of my poster business. Wow, because interesting. The parents. And so I know this from a business point of view, not not from a because I had big ads in uh, in magazines like Playboy and uh, Psychology Today, which I don't know if it still exists, but but a lot of big magazines. And all of a sudden, they, you they were telling their kids, don't go out and march, don't protest. Because four people were murdered. I mean, I, I consider it murdered um, at the hand of uh, Richard Nixon. Oh, pretty interesting way. I've never heard it phrased that way before, Robert. Yeah. Four well, students I... shot by <laughs> Richard Nixon. Yeah. No, you clearly feel pretty strongly about it. Yeah. Well, um, um, your sister, I believe, uh, come, comes into the film a, a couple of point at a couple of points, and. I think she's talking about you. I'm pretty sure she is. And oh, she, yeah. She, yeah. she, she oh, refers yeah. to justice and human rights and community. I mean, right. are they, like, if you were up to teach a course or if somebody's writing a book about you, I mean, is that a good opening line? You know, Robert is, is all about justice, human rights, and community. Yeah, I would say that would be, um, I, as a result of the film, I just uh, the Art Students League, where I teach, wants to do a, a new course. Mm. On, on political art. Wow, cool. And and since you just said what you said, that's how I'm gonna. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna. Oh, nice. Uh, that's very. That's uh, that's very. Good. I mean, because that's exactly what it, what it's gonna be about. Um. So. Well, it's amazing to me. I mean, I. I mean, I see. I. I because I'm a social change guy, and my students and my listeners will know this. I mean, I'm all about kind of moving the needle just a little bit, and you know, it's a const. I'm kind of constantly living between this, so excited about turning the world upside down and being so discouraged, you know. Yeah, well, and why? Why am I even bothering? Nobody's listening. Nobody gives a rat's ass, and 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 yet you see something like this, and then I see your life and what you've done and how you've you clearly have, and you've moved it in a variety of ways and you've been able to exploit the very system that you're criticizing you know it's lovely it's wonderful and and it's really encouraging frankly so 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 when i hear that you know political art wow that's amazing i mean that that yeah. that's a step in the right direction it seems to yeah. me yeah oh yeah they've never had such a thing i mean they're really basically you know on you know how to draw the figure and this that and the other thing but this is like wow so and the same thing happened with pratt pratt uh, institute which is another art school that i don't even teach at and they also are now, uh, they've contacted me. They want me to uh, speak to their, uh, to their students and so on. So a lot of people have been affected by the film. It's great. Um, Important. And, and art is, you know, I, I mean, it's, for me, it's like a, uh, 
as, as you just said, it's this constant struggle. You say, why do you have I me? Mean, how much do you have to do? Um, I mean, we have 50 articles, 50, 50 re- reviews of this one film. Wow. Now, I, I know that Batman didn't get that many reviews. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I mean, we hit, we had a note here. We had a note yeah. with the about art and artists at the you know, at the uh, core. Well, and Robert, so you know what? I, can I just can I just offer a little bit of praise and, and and heap that on you? I mean, you you are a marvelous uh, representative and just a wonderful storyteller. And I just I could have listened to you. For, I could listen to you for hours. I mean, you've got so much to offer, and your generosity just comes through in the film in, in so many unique and interesting ways. Well, many times people say, "Bob, we can't, we can't take it anymore. You've got to, you can't, you got to, got to stop talking about nine eleven or 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 this injustice or that injustice." Right. Uh, but that's part of I me. Mean, it's it's what keeps me. Um, uh, you know, you were t- talking about uh, injustice or this, and I guess because my father was blacklisted. Right. And, right. Um, it, uh, you know, are you now, or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? You know, yeah, and you know that kind of thing. Uh, so I never signed that that oath, by the way. Um, but I'll, I'll, I, uh, I did illustrate the Communist Manifesto in 1968. That doesn't surprise me at all. And that, and they've just now re, they, and in that, and it was sort of done tongue in cheek, right, a little bit, because you know communism was on its way out and all. Yeah, that. that's right. Yeah. And but now, the drawings, people, young kids today, they look at them. Wow, this is right on. You really nailed this, and you nailed this. So I, I've redesigned the book, and uh, as though it was done, you know, maybe in uh, maybe it was designed in uh, Russia or something, right? Right, right. It's that kind of. And at the at the last page, I have. I say, I am not now nor have I ever been a member of the Communist Party. And I'm, not, I'm now going to sign that, you see. I wouldn't sign it in 1957 uh, out of principle, right? Sure, yep. But yep. now I'm going to uh, sign it, send it to all the senators, and say, now, oh, what, are you going to give me, you know, I said, gee, I finally saw the light, right? Right. After all these years, <laughs> right. I saw the light. I want you to know that I'm, you know, I've signed this thing, you know. And see what the reaction is. <laughs> That's funny. That's a great idea. I hope you do it. That, have you heard of uh, Terry Eagleton? Wrote a book a couple of years ago called uh, My, "Why Marx Was Right," and um, it, it it got it's quite controversial in some respects. But there, I, to say there's a resurgence in some some of Marx's writings and thinking might be a bit of a stretch, but certainly uh, a rise in popularity. Um, and there's there's a lot of reasons for that. And it's not 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 so much directed towards communism, but towards the more you know, socially relevant and, and human rights like nature of some of Marx's writing, which I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, it's such a mild, when you, when you read it, it's such a really a mild, um, for most part, it just, it's really uh, about, uh, you know, about money and uh, yeah, yeah. about that kind of thing. And it's like, and so much of it is relevant today. Absolutely. That, yeah. And that's what's so, uh, so I'm going to, um, I, I will send you a copy. Because I think <laughs> I you'll would. get a. You'll get a um... Please do. <laughs> That would be terrific. I would love to see that. Hey, listen, before we're going to have to wrap up here shortly, which which I'm I'm I'm, I'm sorry to say uh, uh, has to happen. But maybe maybe we can do a part two uh, down the road. But um, tell me about your mentor. I'm going to call him your mentor, um, who said that there's no such thing as a line in nature. Yeah. Tell tell right. me about George. Tell me tell me. Yeah, because I it's the whole idea of mentoring and mentorship and, and teaching and yeah. the passing on of tradition and and ideas and elbow knowledge is so I think fundamentally important and missing on so many levels. Yeah, well, I you know as you know I I was uh, expelled from the high school of music and art, um, one for a, an article satirical article on atom bomb drills. And <laughs> I'm sorry also, for laughing. Where, where, you know, just, I mean, you know, and I, I love what I when I heard that you wrote an article as as the film was. I mean, I just laughed out loud because I sort of knew where it was going, or at least I thought I did. Duck, duck and cover, right? Yeah, do those things, and then you go. Yeah, oh, that's gonna help. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that really was. Uh, so, so you know, I, I was like, um, you know, so I, I I was a satirist before I, I met uh, Gross, but I met him because I wouldn't sign the the uh, loyalty oath. And the other articles. So I, so I, I go to the Art Students League because they don't require 
um, an MFA or this or you know they just say you want to learn how to draw, you want to learn how to paint, which which is what is so great about the school. Right. But they also are about passing on tradition. So how do I so I meet George Gross because he had been kicked out of Germany. Uh, actually, uh, you know Hitler was after his uh, his head basically, mm. and so he comes to the Art Students League. Because well, of his, teach. supposedly he, because of his degrading art. Right. right. And he could teach there because uh, without an MFA or a you right. Know, right. degree and that kind of thing. So the school is really uh, pretty unique in that in that way. So I meet him for that reason. I had I have no idea who he was. Uh, I was in his class for one day, and I uh, always told people, this is the first adult I ever respected. mm and unfortunately, I think I said it to my parents as well, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that went over well. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it really was, he was such a special uh, uh, person in the sense that, uh, number one, he didn't just talk about, you know, what about art and this, but he, he could do it. See? He, he wouldn't say, oh, well, this leg is done this way. Or, no, he could then show you. Right. And that, so that was very impressive to me. And uh, and then in, in talking, we, we just hit it off. Uh, I was like a um, a Dada. I was I was like a uh, Dadaist, you know, mm. in his midst. And he he um, you know he was able to um, relive his own um, you know past life and found a uh, you know found a um, guy who 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 was outside the box, you know. It, it's interesting to me that, that, that you, you know, um, I think you've been compared to a lot of um, hmm, artists that you would almost say stand sort of on the outside, I guess you could say, of the tradition. And yet when I, you know, when I see you on film and when I talk to you, you strike me as just so sort of not traditional. And I hope that's not a, I hope you don't take that uh, negatively in any way, but you, you come across as a... Um, not a guy who's necessarily interested in bucking the system, but but as the layers get peeled back, the the depth and the clarity and the focus is there. And I think it's just it's really interesting to me, to Robert, that that, and and I wonder to what degree people like George and 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 your upbringing had an impact on on that. Well, I think the um, you know you say you can't judge a book by its cover. You know, <laughs> yeah. I always looked like a kind of a mild um guy have a you know and i i humor is is of course what saves me right, right humor right. to me is the um it just that's what it's all about so so as a satirist i guess you you um you see life in a um in a kind of um you're able to take the worst parts of it and turn it around or mm. or to make make uh I think my painting, uh, Southern Dogs, okay, I did that in 1965, and that's where I have, that was about the Selma riots. Mm, right. And, and that's where I have the uh, dog's head on on the police. Police officers. And the police officers, officers head on the dogs. Well, of course, that, um, you know, believe me, this, this painting has never been reproduced anywhere. Until uh, until the film, right? But this, but it caught the so so that that's the point of satire. That's the point of you know you you could uh, just paint something realistically, but if you yeah, put that little twist, that really that kind of hurts people. You know, and they look and so the policemen, I'm sure, are not too happy with it, and uh, and so on. But it 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 it's what satire is about, and um, and I uh, so I. So with Gross, of course, we were just, um, uh, you know, well, we were instant, uh, instant buddies. I love, I so, I so love the story about how he tried to get you to Europe. Oh yeah, that that's, was that. <laughs> that's that's got to be one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, there I was. And let me get this straight, I, Robert. Twenty glasses of wine. Is that right? It it, it could have been more. It was. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was Believe me, it was... Uh, That's borderline alcohol poisoning, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I think I slept for over two days when, oh. I, uh, when I, they finally got me back to my uh, my apartment. It was like, uh, 
but uh, my my sisters thought they was they were I was a disgrace. You were a disgrace. Well, I think it's a delightful story, <laughs> and a marvelous film. And and I just I'm so thrilled to have uh, been introduced to the film and to you. Uh, Artbastard, as it sounds, dot com is the website for the film, and more importantly, uh, check out uh, Robert's um, website. Uh, it's R Senadella C E N E D E L L A Gallery dot com, and 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 your, your art's there, your essays are there. It's pre, it's pretty much all there, isn't it, Robert? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very. It's uh, uh, not totally complete, but you know, you have uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of images and. And things on, on that beautiful site. and the and the film is the film available yet on iTunes or will it be getting a wide release? What's what's next for the film? The next uh, well, it as, as well you know, it's, uh, going to places like in Toronto and all that. But then it's going to um, uh, we're we're hoping that it gets onto Netflix. Oh, Netflix! Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Right, of course. And I haven't even talked about that. You're right. I, how, what, what, it's, it's this week. It's, yeah, uh, Friday, it's going to be at Hot Docs uh, uh, in Toronto, of course. This yeah, is this Friday, is Saturday, and Sunday, I think. Fantastic, and then uh, and then if all goes well, going to be available on Netflix down the road. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, what a what a pleasure getting to know you, and 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 I hope my listeners feel the same. I trust they do, and and I hope we get some people out to see the film at Hot Docs uh, this weekend. And again, a huge huge thank you uh, for your time and 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 for the work that you're doing. Well, I I had a, a great time, and the, the things that you talk about, um, actually, um, you know, I can relate, uh, or is, I guess you can relate to what it's like trying to buck the system inside. <laughs> yes. <of> it. <laughs> it's a reassuring, you know, uh, you you know, you, it makes you uh, gives you a little pat on the back. Right. It helps, you know. A little, a little, yeah. No, for sure. A little bit of commiseration goes a long way, yeah. right? Oh yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Robert Senadella and Art Bastard uh, here today on Face to Face. Thanks, Robert. Okay, thank you. Thank you.